Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to All About Canadian Books. To get to know our authors a little better, I'm trying something new and think Vogue 73 questions, but short, a shortened version, 10 questions. And on Thursdays, I will post the author book chat. This week, I'd like to introduce my guest. It's Amanda Dorothy Jean Fullman or Andy. <laughs> her cook hi hi andy hi her cookbook salt beef buckets a love story is a beautiful book filled with recipes and essays that explore the stories and culinary traditions of newfoundland amanda dorothy jean bullman is a chef a writer a stand-up comic and a librarian and she believes passionately in teaching farming, foraging, and food skills to young people. And there's a rumor that she makes the best biscuits in the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Welcome to All About Books, Andy. Hi, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, my absolute pleasure. So I have to go back to these best biscuits in the world. Um, mm -hmm. Which biscuit do people rave the most about? Uh, it's in the book. It's a buttermilk honey butter biscuit. Uh, and my, I have a couple of like tips and secrets for making the best biscuits ever. It's got to be buttermilk and not cream. Um, you have, you can't overwork the dough. You have to stack them together so they'll rise nice and high. Um, it's, I worked at a restaurant that made hundreds and hundreds of biscuits a day. And uh, I really, Feel like I've perfected it as an art form. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drooling just thinking about it. <laughs> Andy, what is your favorite thing to forage? My favorite thing to forage in Newfoundland is definitely the chanterelle mushrooms. The whole mushroom season I find really exciting. It's kind of kind of makes me feel like I'm a prospector looking for gold, you know. <laughs> um, I like mushrooms a lot and I love just that after a rainy day in early fall, you know there's gonna be a big flush of edible mushrooms. I love that you can spend a day in the woods. I just, I, I love everything to do with mushroom foraging. Off of Newfoundland in other provinces, I really enjoy berry picking. And I also think there's nothing as satisfying as finding a, like a wild apple tree. Oh, I love that. Also very curious, um, how many of your firewood cocktails can you drink in an evening? <laughs> <laughs> I can I can put away probably three or four fireweed cocktails. Fireweed is a purple plant that kind of pops up. It propagates after a forest fire. The petals have this incredible floral flavor. They're, it's really nice in a cocktail with like Prosecco and gin. All the flavors are really good. I, because it's floral, it's kind of a sweet cocktail. So I would say three or four and then switch to red wine and you're good. That's a good night. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So now, now I'm thirsty. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> Quite all right. Um, how many rugs have you hooked? I've hooked actually no, I, I've hooked tons of wall hangings, um, but I have actually never turned one of my rugs into a rug. I find that like I put so much work into them that's like they go on the wall or they're really embarrassing. They go under the bed. <laughs> I haven't actually made one that was a rug, but it is like a goal. I really would love to make one for my kitchen. Nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, when you're not cooking, what do you like to do? Um, I really love, well, I love rug hooking. I love reading. I'm a huge reader. I love a mystery novel. I love, I have a real weakness for like, and I'm almost embarrassed to say, but I'm trying not to be embarrassed because I don't think I believe in being embarrassed anymore, but I really love Nora Roberts books. <laughs> so. I, I do too. And the movies. <laughs> yeah. And for like, I had so much shame about loving Nora Roberts. Like I would hide her books on the bottom shelf for the last like couple months. I've been like, you know what? I like Nora Roberts and she makes, she writes like four to six books a year and she's amazing. And if she was a male, we would be celebrating her. We celebrate Stephen King. So I'm trying to lean into it. <laughs> that a girl. <laughs> now for uh, and I just love cooking and making food. That's like, oh. I spent a lot of my time thinking about what's for supper. I spent a lot of time making bread. Mm -hmm. um, in, in the summertime, I'm outdoors a lot, campfires, hiking. I garden. Um, yeah. 
Do you ever sleep, Andy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I sleep. <laughs> I wake up really early, though. <laughs> yeah, I believe it. I believe it. Um, so for those of us who are not from Newfoundland, what is a boil up? A boil up is a sort of a boil up is a beach fire or a fire outdoors that the term refers specifically to a fire that happens in the spring or summer. So you kind of put on your winter boots, you bring your camping gear into the woods. Maybe you go trouting, maybe you go ice fishing, and then you have a boil up. And that usually means tea made with like a kettle that's been like boiled over the wood. Um, sometimes it means pickled wieners. Sometimes it means like biscuits or um, tin milk. So there's a certain like boil up treats that are really common here. Pickled wieners is like a very trendy Newfoundland snack. And the only time I've ever had them is at a boil up. <laughs> so, um, cans of fish, that's like a typical one. Um, it sort of depends on who you go with, but it's sort of a snack in the woods that you sat around a fire, you've built a fire. It's lovely. Oh, it sounds lovely. If you could be a guest on anyone's cooking show, who would it be? Ooh, that's a really great question. Who would I wear? Hmm, that's a great question. I like Samin Nostrat. She has um, salt, fat, acid, heat on Netflix where she travels around the world mm. looking into salt in Japan or how spice is used in Mexico. And I think like I would pick that show for the travel opportunity. <laughs> um, and, but at first celebrity chefs who I really like, I'm really into Edward Lee. He's a, a Korean Southern chef. Um, he was on like season nine of Top Chef. I have his cookbook and he has a little traveling show on Netflix and I, I really like him. Okay. And actually, we'll kind of jump, segue that to cookbooks. I understand you have a cookbook collection of yeah. all your cookbooks besides your own. What is your go-to cookbook, like your cookbook Bible? Oh, there are these books that were produced out of Amsterdam, the homemade series. Um, it's by a woman who is Irish and Dutch, and she hand illustrates them. So these beautiful little illustrations mm -hmm. Um, she has tons of forage recipes in there, and she's got like a homemade summer book, a homemade winter book, um, homemade Christmas, homemade baking. Uh, she really sources her recipes and thinks about food in a really creative way. And I find that like if I pick up one of her books, I always get new ideas. Um, so I, I really like her series quite a bit. Uh, Samin Nostrat that I mentioned, I like salt, fat, acid, heat. Uh, I think that she writes about food really scientifically in a way that's really cool. Um, and then like the classics, like Jacques Pepin, like I love that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it's a big collection that you have, like a really big one. Yeah, it is, it is sizable. Like I don't really feel like I own that many books, but when other people come over, they're all like, whoa, you have a lot of books. <laughs> I'm like, okay, maybe it is getting it at the end. <laughs> so. Of all your recipes in your new, in your cookbook, um, is there one that's closest to your heart? I love the spring and summer bread that I make over um, campfire. Mm -hmm. I find that the bread, bread cooked, like it's like a flat bread and I like to serve it with chanterelles and a garlic oil. And I find that like bread that's been cooked on a cast iron over smoke is just like really hard to beat. So I love that recipe. Um, I'm pretty connected to, um, there's a really good mousse stew recipe in there that I like. Um, I also just love, like there's a, a few dandelion, there's a dandelion salad recipe that I really like because I think that, you know, food costs are really high and dandelion leaves are really clean, really plentiful for us in the spring. And I feel like there, there's actually edible food all around us and we don't always know. I feel the same way about the nettle pesto recipe. Um, stinging nettles are absolutely brutal to deal with and hold, but what you get out of them is really delicious. So there's a nettle soup recipe in there that I, I think is really strong. Okay. Last question, Andy, number 10. If you were having a dinner party, all your closest friends are gonna be there what are you going yeah. to serve? <laughs> and um, so for a dinner party, what am I going to serve? Yeah. Okay. A absolutely great question. 
Um, I think I'm going to serve champagne because it's the fanciest and most fun thing to drink. And it goes with a lot of different food. <laughs> so we're going to do champagne. We're going to do uh, like a really nice homemade sourdough bread to start with a whipped butter. But the whipped butter has um, alder pepper, which is a wild ingredient you can find all over Newfoundland. It's a little bud that's on a tree. So you grind it up, turn it into black pepper. So I would be sourdough bread and alder butter would be my first course. <laughs> my main course would be, I think, a rabbit, uh, maybe a rabbit pasta. Um, Newfoundland has really tasty rabbits. Uh, and a lot of people, they're hard to access and people don't really know about how to cook rabbit. We have this idea that it's super gamey, but just like rabbit in a little ravioli is like the nicest thing. So rabbit in a ravioli would be my second course. And I would serve that with a nettle pesto. So then you get another wild ingredient. <laughs> and I think I would do tiramisu for dessert, but the espresso would also have ground chaga. And chaga is like a growth on birch trees. That's really, really good for you. And it has sort of um, chocolate tones in it. So it'd be tiramisu with a little ground chaga and espresso on top. And then, <laughs> and then for dessert, I, or not for dessert, sorry. And then I think I would serve that with like really excellent espresso. So champagne and espresso, sourdough with alder butter, rabbit ravioli and tiramisu with espresso and chaga. That's like a combination of a lot of my favorite foods, pasta and tiramisu, but with like hints of Newfoundland in it. I think that'd be really fun. Yay. <laughs> oh, I'm really excited by that question. Now I wanna have a dinner party, but COVID. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. COVID. COVID. What are you going to do? Yeah. Okay. Now that we're all hungry and thirsty, thank you so much, Andy Bullman. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. And for our viewers, please come back on Thursday, January 27th, because Andy will be back and we will be talking more about her cookbook, Salt Beef Buckets, a love story. Thank you, Andy. You're welcome. Bye, everyone. Bye.